episode 2 dropped and already things are getting more crazy by the minute. So let's talk about it. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel for the second breakdown of Chainsaw Man for Anime Watchers. I collected all the important issues I found in this episode which was packed with new information and we're going to talk about all of that right now. As I mentioned in the previous video, it seems that Denshi's condition is indeed extremely rare, to the point it doesn't even have a name to describe it. We later learn that when a demon takes over a human corpse, they become something called a fiend. That makes its head take a less human-like shape. Denji's case is different. His body was taken by a demon, but because Puchita made a contract with him and dedicated his heart, that resulted in Denji, which is capable to switch between his demon and human form. And that, according to Makima, is extremely rare. The episode picks up with Denji and Makima on their way to the Demon Hunter base. We have a close look at Makima's eye, which seems very unusual, so I wonder if this is just an aesthetic thing or does it have some reason for that? And by the way, the same question goes for Denji's teeth. Remember I said she almost treats him like a pet? Well, yeah, that's pretty much the case, apparently. She tells him that pretty clear. She owns him now. And she warns him she doesn't need a dog that says no. If a dog doesn't do what he's told, then they just put him down. That gives Denji a little taste of the scary side of Makima, but that goes along with her extremely nurturing side as well, so it doesn't seem to be a huge problem for Denji. The opposite, like we see him take advantage of that and let Makima feed him. She is the first person who treated Denji nice, who didn't laugh at his appearance or the way he smelled. She pays for his food and provides him with her company, and for him that's more than enough. He is already living the dream, so he is perfectly willing to follow and do whatever Makima tells him to do. When they get to the Demon Hunter headquarters, Denji meets Aki, another Demon Hunter working under Makima. Here is another important detail we get. It seems that Makima created some experimental team, the Public Safety Devil Extermination Special Division No. 5. Aki is the head of this group and he seems to think they already have enough crazy individuals, so he's not excited about Denji joining them. But Makima reminds him that those people are necessary for this team, and Denji, which his condition is extremely rare, should get special treatment. But she also adds that if he tries to run, he will be killed like a demon, making Denji realize she owns him until the day he dies. Another important detail, it seems that the higher ups of the Demon Hunters don't look kindly on this new team Makima created. The team is under constant inspection and that's why they always need to bring results to prove they are effective as an experimental team. This team in general doesn't get a lot of love, as Makima tells them that the human hunters and the police will give them a dirty look but still let them work. We still don't know the true purpose of this group and what was Makima's reason to create it in the first place. Also, her eyes, which I mentioned earlier, and her impressive sense of smell makes me think there is something about her we still don't know. Going back to the episode, Denji and Aki go out for the first time, but that doesn't go smoothly. Denji keeps asking questions about Makima, which seems to upset Aki. Aki clearly looks up to her and has lots of respect and admiration for her. He leads Denji to an alley and then roughs him up and tells him he should leave now and that he is doing him a favor. He knows that Denji joined just because of Makima and he warns him that this job will lead to his death. He should just run away. Denji, which is extremely honest, doesn't even try to lie about it. Of course, he joined because of her. Aki looks at him disgustingly and spits on him just to prove to us how much he respects Makima and doesn't respect Denji's intentions. And here comes the funniest battle I've seen in a while. While Aki starts walking, Denji surprised attacked him with a direct kick to the nuts. And this is where every male grabbed his crotch with pain and so did I, because Denji doesn't stop there and instead he keeps kicking him in the nuts while he's on the ground. When I'm fighting with a guy, it's nuts or nothing and he keeps on kicking him. That looks so painful but also extremely funny. Denji makes clear that this, right now, is the best life he ever had. He gets food, a roof over his head and the companion of a beautiful woman. That is a dream coming true for him. It's far more than he ever wanted and he's not going to back down just because Aki tells him to. That's why he doesn't care if he dies while living his dream and he reminds us that he is not living only for him but also for Puchita. The idea of living the moment to its fullest is a strong motive in this show and I expect to see it much more as we go on. 
Back in the alley, Aki stands up to fight back, telling Denji that Makima is far superior to him and not on the same level as Denji. And to that, Denji responded with another kick to the nuts and I just started laughing. It is clear that Denji grew up on the streets and he knows how to fight dirty, something Aki was not expecting at all. They both return to Makima which lets them know they have to work together. Here we get to see Makima's assertiveness. She is scary, but also very maternal. And she explains the situation to Denji in a kind and loving way, which of course makes him do exactly what she tells him to do. Denji is now assigned to Aki's team and he goes with him to his apartment. Denji, who doesn't have anything in life, suddenly finds all the good things life has to offer. We see him acting like a child, seeing all those basic things he never had, like a basic bath for example. He also gets to finally put some jam on his toast, getting excited as a child would and that was a pretty fun scene. Of course we can see Aki is not so excited to share his apartment with this man child. They get their first assignment and go out and while on the way, Denji asks Aki if Makima is a good person. Here we see again the respect Aki has for her, which is probably more like admiration as he tells Denji that Makima saved his life. And we also could see his funny reaction when Denji mentions he hugged Makima the other day, so there is clearly a certain degree of jealousy here. For Aki, Denji only joins to get closer to a girl and he can't respect that as an honorable reason to join the demon hunters. On their first mission, they are sent to get rid of a fiend, which as we mentioned is a product of a demon taking over a human corpse. That makes Denji ask if he is like this as well, but Aki informs him that the head of a fiend doesn't look like a head of a human. We can also see a little moment of Aki starting to understand how Denji's life has been so far when he realizes Denji has never even gone to school. They find the fiend and Aki orders Denji to transform into a devil and kill it. But to his surprise, Denji kills him with his axe without using his power. He tells Aki that he just wanted it to be painless for him. And here we get another important detail about Aki. He hates demons. They are the ones who killed his family and for that he wants to kill them and he has no intention of making it painless for them. Here we see why he doesn't respect Denji's reason for joining. He tells Denji everyone except him is taking this seriously. But he also sees how lonely Denji is when he tells him he is willing to be friends even with demons simply because he doesn't have any friends. He steps out of the room and we get the real reason Denji didn't use his powers. He simply didn't want to make a bloody mess and destroy the dirty magazines on the floor. Denji then thinks about his life. He has all he ever wanted by now and is living his dream as he promised Puchita. That's why he is not taking this seriously as Aki mentioned. Denji realizes that Aki and all the others fighting still have a dream to accomplish. In Aki's case, it is to avenge his family. Denji's dream was so small he was able to reach it fast, so maybe he needs to find some more dreams to try to accomplish. If he will have something he truly believes in, as Aki does, then maybe he could take all of this more seriously. And of course, he misinterpreted Aki's words when he decides that this dream will be well, boobs. Oh god, that was so stupid. <laughs> so stupid. But yeah, this is a dream of his and he now hopes that trying to fulfill that dream would make him more like Aki and the others. Now I must say that I pretty much hated this, I'm not gonna lie, but I'm also pretty much positive this is going to change. I believe this is just a part of his character development, to show he is still a kid and like Aki said, he doesn't have a real reason to fight yet. So I'm sure at some point in the story Denji will mature as a character and find something more substantial to fight for. Back at the Demon Hunter headquarters, Makima introduces Denji to his new partner. And just like she mentions before, this team is different. Denji's new partner is a very loud fiend called <laughs> And like other fiends, her head also doesn't look human. That raises the question of why some fiends act the way they do, while power, as Makima stated, is acting much more reasonable. My guess is there are more subtleties to the fiends and how they interact with the human bodies. And the questions of free will and freedom of choice might also be important aspects of this story. So we'll have to wait and see. While Denji and Power patrolling, they see the other authorities indeed look down on them. We can also see how Denji looks at Power as a bit crazy. She is a demon hunter, but she also acts like a demon, constantly talking about blood and how much she likes to kill. Soon after she gets the scent of blood and she goes running. 
Here we see some of the powers of a fiend, as power uses her own blood to create a huge blood hammer. That technique, by the way, is extremely similar to what we see in Dead Man's Wonderland, when many use their blood in the same way. It's an awesome anime, so go check it out, it's also extremely bloody. Power swoops down straight onto the sea cucumber demon, <laughs> making a huge mess all around. She then starts laughing like a maniac about her kill, while worried Denji is looking at her from the rooftops. And this is where this episode ends, and it was a fun one. I can't wait to see Denji working together with this insane fiend while using his own demon form. What were your favorite moments? Let me know in the comments. Also, let me know what you think about Makima and why her eyes are so different. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and also check out my Attack on Titan content if you're a fan of the show and there is a lot of content, believe me. And that is all for today, my chainsaw friends, and I hope you enjoyed. I will see you soon in my next video and even sooner in the comments. And until then, don't forget to always chase your dreams and to dedicate your hearts to all of humanity, inside and outside the walls.